Sir Michael Palin has spent the last few decades travelling the world, opening our eyes, but with all travel plans, of course, on hold right now. He's decided, this is such a great idea, to look back on his most memorable adventures. Oh, Michael joins me now. It's so good to see you. Thank you for joining us yeah. this morning. Thank good to you. see you, Lorraine. Very nice to be here. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Made well, me want to travel again. I know, we all do. We all do. But this is the next best thing because we can, again, you can show us the world through your eyes. And, I mean, you really were a, a trailblazer. I mean, I know lots of people do these types of shows now, but mm. you, you did it in such a way that made it so accessible for all of us. Well, we, we stumbled on the, you know, the technique by accident, I think. I mean, I set off, I said... Around the World in Eight Days sounds like a wonderful thing to do. Yes, thank you very much, BBC, I'll do it. When we actually started, I really wasn't quite sure what I was supposed to be doing. Was I a proper presenter like Alan Wicker? Was I supposed to be um, a comic figure acting like Phileas Fogg? And pretty soon, I actually stumbled on the fact that it just had to be me yeah. and, and I had to be every man traveller. If things went wrong, which they invariably did, we kept them on camera. And I think that's what made it appealing. People felt, well, it's just somebody going through the sort of confusions we would go through. That was what was groundbreaking about it. And obviously, after Around the World in 80 Days, you got the bug. We had you doing Pole to Pole oh, as yeah. well. I loved that series. That was such a brilliant series. Must have been great for you to actually look back on all of this and see it all again. It was. It's not only quite good, it's actually essential because I think... I mean, I've done eight travel series now, something like that, nine if you include North Korea. And in a way, it be can become a bit of a blur, a blur of half-remembered things. So to actually look back and check my diaries out at the time and what I was feeling at the time um, is quite important. Otherwise, it all goes by and you forget the detail, you forget the people you met, you forget what travelling actually meant to you. I know, and we're all feeling that a little bit. I mean, I love to travel. It's the thing that I, I, I love to do. Yes. And the journey, that's the thing as well, which, which I loved about what you do. The journey, of course, is, is very yeah. much part of the experience and sometimes is the whole experience. Well, yes. I mean, that's why after Around the World in 80 Days, we hadn't got another Jules Verne story to do except 10,000 Leagues Beneath the Sea, but I you know, don't <laughs> think I could have held my breath for that long. So we decided to just do a dramatic journey, and North Pole to South Pole doesn't get much more dramatic than that, uh -huh. through Russia and through Africa. So that was a big challenge and very exciting, and there have to be a challenge. There has to be a feeling of excitement about them, otherwise it's not, no point in doing them. No, absolutely. Is there anywhere that, when you were watching all of these back, that you just thought, I've got to go back there? Is there somebody that's pulling you, that's calling you, saying, come back, see me? Well, yeah, there's actually quite a lot of places. Oddly enough, one of them's in, in now in a very difficult area, but it's Kashmir ah. in um, North India. It's sort of between Pakistan and India, sort of discussing who, who should run the place. But the Dal Lake in Kashmir was the most serene, wonderful, comfortable, beautiful, um, delicate place I've ever been. So I'd like to just go there and sort of paddle around for a, a few days and I'd feel a better man. <laughs> I think we all would. I think we all would. I'd love to go there. So it's definitely on, definitely on my list. Now, you have teamed up with Sir David Attenborough, which is fantastic. Um, and I love this documentary. I love the two of you just, the two of you just talking and sharing experiences. I love that he told you about the fact that um, a young lady's got a tattoo of himself on her thigh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just asked him, I said, look, I often get the, ask the question, you know, were you recognised anywhere? And what's the most ex uh, extraordinary place you've been recognised? And David thought a bit and then he said, well, I'm and slightly bashfully told me the story about <laughs> Borneo, where two girls had, had come round the corner where he was filming and said, oh, my gosh, it's David Attenborough. And one of them, you know, revealed that on the top of her, Thigh was David Attenborough's likeness <laughs> tattooed. <laughs> I love that. And he that told was... this story and he really cracked up because the great thing about David is he's got a terrific sense of humour. He can really make him laugh. <laughs> Um, and I think that's very important in his message. That's why he's a good communicator. Absolutely, and his message has never been more important. That, that's the thing right now. I mean, we've, we know that uh, Prince yeah. Charles has been talking about this as well, about we're, we're kind of on this tipping point. You know, we, we, yeah. we, need, we actually need to take heed and do something right now. We can't be distracted. We've got to do something now. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, D David's point is that, you know, we are a part of nature, but now we are, we feel we can live apart from nature. Yeah. And he says, we can never do that. We need the natural world and we've got to be aware of it. And we've got to be aware of our part in the natural world and not be sort of arrogantly believe that humans can solve everything because we really can't. No. So, you know, I mean, I think, I think he's, he's, he's really very worried, but, uh, in his 90s, to be doing so much to inform the world just, just shows how much he cares and how much I think he feels it's last chance saloon. No, he does. And people, I mean, if you don't listen to him, then there's something wrong with you because he knows. He absolutely knows. During this strange time of, uh, I think a lot of people have been going through a time of kind of reflection, if you like. Have you found mm. that? Have you been sitting? I mean, I know you've been looking back at all the things you've been doing for this new series, but do you think it's a time where we all need to, I mean, Prince Charles is talking today about resetting. It's quite an interesting concept, isn't it? Yeah. To kind of just rethink things a little bit. Well, I've been, well, I've had a lot of thinking time because I had a, a heart operation about a year ago. And, um, after six months, I was absolutely fine. I feel terrific. And then COVID started. So I've had about um, a year in all on, uh, of sort of being confined to home and seeing the fewer people and not being able to contact people in quite the same way or feel the same human contact. And it does make you think. It makes you think a lot about um, uh, how, you know, how best to spend your life and, and what we all do to our planet and uh, how we use its resources. It just gives you, a, a, a for, for a while, it gave me a still quiet moment. And I think that the consequences of, of COVID are going to be with us for a long, long time. Uh, and we're thinking about them day by day, but people are talking more about themselves and being able to um, try and help with some solution. And I think that's, that's, that's a good thing, rather than roaring on without looking left or right or behind us, just saying, oh, oh I just gotta go for this. Mm -hmm. It's important to stop and it's important to think and to, to sort of be aware that competition is not everything. No, absolutely. And I know that you always say, I remember watching you at a wonderful lecture that you gave, and you talk about curiosity, that we've all got to oh, attain yeah. that. It's so important. That sort of childlike curiosity is very important. Yes, it really is. I mean, that's why I, I, I've always loved places other than where I was. <laughs> always wanted to be somewhere else. I think it's difficult now. I mean, I think we can't travel in the same way. And I feel very... Very sorry um, for a lot of the younger people who have got a great curiosity about the world. Some of them write to me, they've watched my programmes, and suddenly they can't go anywhere. And what worries me also is that without that contact between people from all over the world, we, we lose a little bit, we become a little bit more uh, in, our own, in our own world, behind our own fences. We don't trust each other as much. No, and I, I think I that we're going to have to get that back. We are. I always think, you know, people talk about superpowers and I always think the best superpower you could ever had. Could you imagine if we could all speak each other's languages? Wouldn't that be amazing? Oh. And all the barriers oh. that would break down. I would love to be able to speak every single person on the planet their language. Didn't matter where they were from. That would just be wonderful. But that's what you do so well. You broke down so many barriers. You got people to realise that we're all essentially the same. You know, everywhere you went and you chatted to people. That's what I loved about, about what you did. So thank you so, so much. Well. Well, thank you so much. And uh, I will now go away and, and learn um, Spanish or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, I think we should. And do you know what I'm going oh, to do? Tomorrow. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a tattoo of your image on my bottom and oh, then you oh, can oh. say one upmanship. The next time you see David Attenborough, you can say, ha ha, actually, I can go one bit. <laughs> I'm away well, to do that. <laughs> well, this, you've really started something there, Lorraine. I mean, you may well regret this. Oh, <laughs> I, I should want know. to check the tattoo. I should want to see it. You know, Obviously, the next life. time we meet. Great to see you. Thank you so, so much. You've cheered me up no end. And, of course, you can watch Michael in Travels of a Lifetime, Sunday, 8 o'clock on BBC Two. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.